If you've bought a new Samsung and you want your home screen to look exactly the same, the iconography and stuff, I'll just show you how it is actually performed using your old phone and the new Samsung S22. First off, you just power it on. And this is much easier when you go from a Samsung device to a Samsung device than if you come from any other Android phone or in a, a last if you come from an iPhone. So this is the Samsung S10e and this is the Samsung S22. It's a move that I think a lot of people are going to be doing actually. You choose your language. But always take a good look at these if you want to deny something because most of them, most people just say accept everything, right? And that if you choose that, it will also accept to uh, send the diagnostic status. And that of course could uh, affect your uh, data plan. I'll just take some time to actually read this through as it's going to be my new primary device. Like permits. And I'll just accept my. See, and now it's asking for my various info and stuff. The thing is, I haven't yet put in my SIM card. You can choose to do that either at the end or at, at up front if you want to, but it doesn't really matter too much. But now it will realize that it hasn't got it because it hasn't got it, but it doesn't matter. It will just up through that option. And then it asks if you want to copy your data, apps and data. And I want this in this particular case. You could also, of course, up to a completely new install if you want to leave your old phone barren. So, and this is what is especially good with Samsung. That is that now it's updates. It's, it's uh, downloading Smart Switch, which is an app that's already on this one. And then it can just transfer the complete phone as it is. What's your old unit? It says uh, Galaxy or an iPhone. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? I, have, I have a OnePlus. I have a Google. Oh, no, you can't do that. And now you're just accepting permission to like transfer everything. And for this transfer, you could choose the wireless, but I'm going to go with the wire because I have a USB-C to USB-C. So now we'll connect this to my new device first. It doesn't matter. I think if you connect it to a new device or the old device first and then to my old device. Yes. And then it asks if I want to send my things to my new Galaxy. Yes. And it's still installing the smart switch. And you can see I didn't have it on my own phone because I uninstalled. Because it's an app that has access to all of your dates, I didn't want to have it yeah, on my old phone. That's, of course, a consideration you should also make. Right here at the startup, I can't choose the brightness setting on my new phone, so it's always going to be like maximum blown. So even though it would have been nice to have a more balanced uh, phone comparison here, it's not going to be. So right now, I'm just saying yes to I want to... Um, Transfer everything, okay? I think I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And then it asks if I want to transfer all of my messages. The latest two years, the latest one year, six months, 30 days, whatever. It could be fun to see all the old ones, what I said, and all the old, old messages. Actually, I would normally just say bye-bye to my old messages. Three months. I'll say the last year, maybe there's some football. Talk to and transfer again. So that's it. You want to transfer your accounts? Yes. And I'll just say it is doing the transfer as it's just been asking me to do. If you are coming from any other device than a Samsung, this is going to be more tedious. It's not going to be as easy. And then, then I would just transfer it via the Google accounts. Back up all of your uh, things on your own old phone to your Google account. And then when you log into this, log into your new phone on your Google account, and then you get all of the stuff. Okay, so I have to type in my ordinary Google device. And then it asks me of how I want to validate my Google account I've just logged into. And I'll choose to get sent on my phone. And there it is. And then there's this Google service account. If you have no other option than to accept, you just got to 
Except, but look carefully each time at, at each step you go through to not get right away. You can see this has been a new logon to your Gmail account. Oh my god! And then it asks me if I want to copy, uh, make a safety copy on my Google Drive. Yeah, but I don't like to use the placing it because it like it's again it's all this diagnostic state. So that's a personal preference of how well you like that. But I don't like I like to turn my GPS on or off, and I don't want to send all that diagnostic state and stuff. Not that I haven't got an extensive data plan, but you know. And then it always also asks me what search engine I want to use, and I mean. There shouldn't really be a question. I mean, like, isn't people using Google like 90, 95% of the world using that? It's annoying. And then I always choose a pin code the first because all the others you can set up later. So I just like to turn on a pin code. And that was the pin code. And then it says, do you want to activate the Google Assistant? But anyone, well, in 2022, in April, anyone who's tried the Google Assistant, over for comparison with the Siri, for instance, you've just plainly given up. That's what I have at least. So I've seen small children in electronic stores shout, hi Google, hi Google, and try to activate it and it never works, right? So, but hi Siri, or hey Siri, it just works every damn time. So um, I'm just gonna skip the assistant as I said, it never works. And the other occasion where it works is always the occasion where you don't want it to work. And then it starts up and you think, what did I say in Serbo Croatian that activates the voice assistant now? Not that I'm a Serbo Croatian, but you know, it's all always like, like when I think back, I can never think of a time I said, hey, Google or anything to that avail. So it never works. Hi, hey, Siri, it works always. So that's just the thing you got it. We will take into consideration with the Samsung phone. And then it asks me to log into my Samsung account. And that's actually a problem because on the, my old, uh, old phone, I also, also, on my old phone, I always have set it up to just log in via my Google account. But the problem is in the setup phase, you got to log on to your Samsung account if you want to. Well, use the Samsung services. So you can, you can skip it. But, but better, of course, is to just um, log on, okay? And the problem is you can't log on because if I use my uh, code for my Gmail service, it doesn't work because it doesn't support uh, codes or so 16 characters, right? And some special characters because it only supports old characters. So I cannot log on now unless I change my... Actually, I've chosen now not to to try log into Samsung yet. So I'll say jump, and then it says, "Do you really want to exclude all this Samsung Pay and Cloud and stuff?" And no, you don't, because you'll set it up later. And it's it's re trust me, it will remember you to set it up later, many a times. So skip for now, and then it says you're through, you're done. And then, bravo, you can actually take your new Samsung S22 into use. And now you can see down here, it's nothing like, it's not like the old phone setup, right? But it will populate these, uh, all the icons the same way. You gotta be, you gotta log into various stuff again um, later in the process. And as, as well as I gotta set up with the Samsung account now. But, I'll show you how it looks at the final screen in a mo. And now I just successfully logged into my Samsung account after the finishing process, actually. Here I kind of choose various things. Again, it's about, do you want news and special offers? Do you want to enable offline tracking and stuff? And you can choose all or you can choose nothing of them. I'll just say accept, but I haven't chosen nothing. So yeah. And then again, it asks me of a security code that should be coming right here. And I'll just say yes. 
And then I'll write in the code, of course. It suggests to me that I log on to Samsung with a Samsung Pass with my biometric dates instead of my uh, code. And I would actually like that. That's more secure, I would, I would guess, I would say. But right now, as I'm doing all this, the data is still being transferred. Normally, I'm a lefty when holding my phone. Let's just say yes. And now I just have to identify via my thumb to access the Samsung Pass. And then, of course, I would be able to use this, in, or now I will be able to use this in the Samsung Pay and various other stuff. And you can tell now that I'm locked on, on many uh, devices. This just actually uh, reminds me that I got to remove some of these old ones. Let's see. This one I don't have anymore. I'll just log out of that one. But as you tell you, now I'm logged on to the Samsung Cloud also. And that means that I would get all of the Samsung services that I was asked to choose from from the start. And let's see how far we are. It's still transferring data to my, to my new phone. So now it says the data transfer is finished. We're very happy for that. And then I only have to like, let's just see here. I'm still doing some updates and stuff. Just getting some of the contacts from my email, I can see. Yeah. So it's still going to do some configuration before it looks completely as the old phone. We'll get back. Ta-da! And now, as you can tell, the new phone looks exactly like the old phone. Let's just... Yeah, even the weather widget is now the same. And you can see the icons have been placed in the apps, the same places. And of course, I have to log in on uh, most of these again. That's the only setback. Doesn't typically remember your logins everywhere, but um, see, now it's like I had my old phone and everybody's happy, except you want to keep your old phone for those logins. So have any kind of ideas to where, how you logged in on various places. Let's just restart this and that's it.